In this problem, you're going to see how police can come up with an estimate of how fast a driver was traveling before they locked up their brakes, for example, during a car accident. So in this case, the police are going to measure some distance. In this case, it's going to be the length of the skid marks that a driver leaves. And in this case, it's going to be 92 meters. And our question is, what is the velocity of this driver at this point, let's say the initial velocity. We don't know what it is. We know that the driver is going to lock up their brakes and eventually come to a stop. So at this point over here, our final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. How do we know that? The driver is going to lock up their brakes until they eventually slow down and come to a stop. Now over this 92 meters, the driver is going to be moving with some velocity in the this direction. And in this case, let's call this the positive x direction. So if we were to draw a coordinate system, this would be our positive x direction, this would be our positive y. We're only looking at motion in the x direction for right now. Now over this 92 meters, this car is going to be slowing down or decelerating. So the velocity and the acceleration vectors are going to be pointed in opposite directions, indicating that this car is going to be slowing down. Now there's a few things that we don't know is how long it takes to slow down. So let's say delta t equals question mark. We don't know what that is. We do know what the acceleration is. They give it to us in the problem. This object is going to be slowing down at a rate of 7 meters per second. And since it's in the opposite direction to the velocity, I'm going to write it as negative 7 meters per second squared, indicating that this object is slowing down. Now, in order to determine the initial velocity of this object, we can look at three different kinematic equations, which I'll just summarize here. We can say v final equals v initial plus acceleration times time. We can also say that delta x equals v initial times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Or we can say v final squared equals v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. Now, notice that this equation has a variable of time, and I don't know what the time is in this problem. So this equation is probably not the most useful equation to begin with. Then there's this equation, which relates the distance, the initial velocity, and the acceleration of the object. But again, notice that this is in terms of time. So this equation won't immediately be useful. Now take a look at this equation down here. It relates my final velocity to my initial velocity, the acceleration, and the distance over which this object travels. So this is going to be the most useful form of the equation to solve this problem. So now in this case, let me just rewrite this equation. We know that our final velocity squared equals our initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. Now, we know that our final velocity is going to be zero. So we can now rewrite this as zero equals our v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. And now in this case, what you need to do is you need to take this term and move it over to the other side so that we can solve for our initial velocity. To do that, what you need to do is subtract the initial velocity from both sides, the initial velocity squared. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to another side of the equation. And so what you should see is zero minus v initial squared is gonna equal v initial squared minus v initial squared is zero plus two times the acceleration times delta x. Now in this case, what you need to do is you're looking for your initial velocity. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by negative one. And when you do that, what you should get is negative one times negative v initial squared is v initial squared equals negative two times the acceleration times the change in distance. Now the last thing that you need to do is take the square root of both sides. So when you do that, you get the square root of negative two times the acceleration times the change in distance. Now in this problem, this is gonna work out to be negative two times our acceleration was negative seven meters per second squared. And this was slowing down over a distance of 92 meters. And then you're gonna take the square root of the, all of that. Now notice, you get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So in this case, you'll also get two times seven, which is 14. 14 times 92 works out to be one, two, eight, eight. And notice you get a meter squared, per second squared, and you need to take the square root of that entire term. Notice that this is an important thing, that you get meter squared per second squared, because when you take the square root of that object, you're gonna get units of meters per second. And when you take the square root of this number, what you should get is 35.8 meters per second. And that's gonna be the initial velocity before this car locks up its brakes. And as just one final check, let's just look at a few things. All right, so we know that this is our initial velocity. We know our initial velocity is gonna be 
35.8 meters per second. After one second of slowing down, the velocity of this object is going to change by 7 meters per second. So after one second of slowing down, this object is going to be traveling at a rate of 28.8 meters per second. After one more second of slowing down, this object goes from 28.8 meters per second to 21.8 meters per second. After one more second of slowing down, this object or this car will be going 14.8 meters per second. After one more second, this car slows down from 14.8 meters per second to 7.8 meters per second. And after one final second, this object will be traveling 0.8 meters per second. One of the things that you should notice that is that during each one second interval of time, the velocity is going to change by 7 meters per second per second, or 7 meters per second squared. And that's what, again, it means for an object to be slowing down with a constant acceleration. Now we can figure out the time it takes for this car to slow down. Now that we know our initial velocity, we can use this kinematic equation, which says that our final velocity equals our initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. In this case, we know our final velocity is zero, so we can rewrite this as v initial plus acceleration times time. And when you solve this equation for time, what you should see is that this equals negative v initial divided by your acceleration. Now in this case, our initial velocity is 35.8 meters per second. And we're going to divide this now by negative 7 meters per second squared. And when you do that, you should get about 5.1 seconds. We made a rough approximation to how long it would take this object to slow down. In this case, it took one, two, three, four, five seconds to hit this final velocity. And so what you should see is just the general pattern that every second this object slows down at a rate of seven meters per second. And so we can come up with a guesstimate of how long it takes for this object to slow down based on the change in velocity.